Most leaders spend way too much time on social media and they do it backwards. And so what I want to do right now is I want to provide you some social media training and I want to tell you one thing not to do. So that, that should be easy with five reasons why not to do it. And then I want to give you five things to do, and then I'll link you off to some bonus training to where you can go deeper. Again, most leaders, they spend too much time on social media. They do social media backwards. This leads me into what not to do. Social media should lead people to your site, not from your site. Let me just be clear about it. Never send people from your website to Facebook or YouTube. I've got a friend, he leads a ministry. He is a phenomenal speaker and he showed me his new website. I went to see it and it looked great. I see the big welcome video he's got on the homepage and he goes through, talks for about 20 seconds about what they teach, the framework they use. And then he says, hey, to connect with us at a deeper level, go find us on YouTube or Facebook. And he lists all the other places. And I thought, no, they are already at your home base to connect with us at a deeper level, chat or fill out the form or talk to us or take advantage of the free opt-in below. Social media should lead people to your site, not ever from your site. That's an old way to do it. The old paradigm, uh, and I don't even know if it was ever the best paradigm, was people go to your website and they go, oh, hey, we got all this great stuff on social media. We got all these posts. Hey, go find us and go connect there. Here's the new model. Invite people to your house and then keep inviting them back to your house and then continue inviting them back to your house, not to social media. Let, let me give you a couple of reasons for this. And I think I'm gonna give you, I said five reasons to not send them to social media. Reason number one is when people go to social media, you don't know where they're gonna be set next. So social media platforms are free and advertisers pay big money to lure people to different forms of content. That's how YouTube, that's how Facebook, that's how Instagram, that's how all of them make their money is by bouncing the eyeballs of people that come there to other things. So now, now, now think about it, even at a free level, uh, somebody goes and watches your YouTube video, there are all these other ads and other videos on the side. If they go to Facebook, you know, and they see your feed. Well, that means they're seeing all these other feeds and so much other stuff too. It's just not worth just sending them to your place. Reason number two is on social media, you and your audience are the commodity. You are what's being sold on social media, specifically access to you is what's being sold. Let, let me explain. Uh, here's the social media business model. Uh, point number one is they invite billions of people to join their platform, luring those people with, quote, free access. Hey, come over here. Come to X. It's free. Come to Instagram. It's free. Hey, TikTok's better. It's free. Snapchat. Oh, hey, it's free. YouTube. It's free. So they do this, again, because you're the commodity. So they're going to invite you to come join for free. And then they're going to ask you to participate on that platform. While you do, they're going to collect massive amounts of data in the process. And then they're going to turn and they're going to sell that data to advertisers. And they are, as a result, going to collect billions in revenue from those advertisers doing what? Selling access to you and to the people that you send there to bounce the eyeballs from whatever you sent them to do to whatever they're paying for access to. Now, I'm not down on social media at all. We use social media. We run ads on social media. Uh, what I'm saying is don't send people. Remember the premise of this. Don't send people from your site to social media. Send people from social media to your site. Here's reason number three. Uh, social media platforms will shut you down, throttle your post. Throttle means they slow them down. 
especially if you're religious. Now, you're not going to have access to your entire audience anyway. Only about 5% of your followers on a good day will see your post anyway. But I know business leaders who lost their entire Facebook group. Oh, we made a mistake. We shut it down. I know ministry leaders who got put into Facebook jail for 30 days. I mean, they couldn't post and share with their audience because of some, quote, controversial post, meaning they took a position on abortion, or they took a position on a political issue, or they took a position on faith. Social media can shut you down, and you don't own it. There's nothing you could do about it. Uh, just this last week, because of the recording of this, I had a friend of mine who was launching a new retreat for men. Uh, we built the webpage. He went, he posted it online, and he said, oh, Facebook already took it down. And I, sure enough, we went to the post, and it said, content not available. <laughs> they had removed it. And then he said, this happens to us all the time, to which I said, hey, use social media, but use social media to drive people to your site. Don't depend on social media. Reason number four is the platform, the platforms change. They go away, they shut down, they change algorithms. You might remember Periscope. Periscope was really that first one that would let you do a story type thing. The video that you'd create, you go live on Periscope, and then it disappeared. I think Twitter might have bought it, basically just to can it, I think. Think about what would happen if you built your entire church, ministry, business presence on MySpace. I mean, think think about even today. Facebook's still a great place to connect with people. I'm thankful we can really interact on all of these social media platforms. So this is not a negative on social media. It's talking about strategy to lead people on your discipleship path. And I think you could do that easier on your website. Facebook has changed a lot. Even now, it's gotten far more political. It's gotten older. So the average age on Facebook a couple of years ago was mid to late 40s. I think it's probably gotten older since then, some of my kids have Facebook pages only because they do businesses and they know, oh, hey, I got to be able to connect with people that are in their 50s because they have money, but my kids are hanging out on Snapchat or to some degree, Instagram, which leads me to number five, every different graphic, every demographic is on a different platform, meaning that you would need to communicate with multiple platforms in order to reach everyone. And then you got to remember only 5%-ish of the people that are following you will see it on that platform. At some point you go, oh, you know what? There's got to be a better way. I think I'm going to build it on space I own, but not, not even space that I'm renting. Now, you, you think about that. Uh, no one renovates a rental home, right? Because you don't own it. You put the money into something that you have permanently. Nobody, I mean, renovates a home they're borrowing for a yet-to-be-determined amount of time because you could get kicked out of that home at any point, yet that's what we do with our discipleship, life transformation strategy, when we relegate it to social media where fewer of our people see us and it's temporary because we don't own it. Uh, now, here are five ways to handle social media for sure. You need to use social media. Here's five ways to do it. Number one, use a content calendar. That's going to make it easy. Use a content calendar to make it easy. Uh, here's what that means. Uh, a lot of times the biggest concerns, questions people have about social media are what do I post and when do I post? What if you had a grid like this? We've got more training on it that's available for you in this course as a bonus module. If you just kind of looked at it and said, okay, I got seven days in the week. I can post in the morning and or the afternoon. I can post on any of these days. I can post on all of these days. I can post once, twice. I get to make it up. You decide for you. 
But if you just kind of went through this and said, okay, every Monday morning, I'm going to post the sermon from Sunday, regardless of who it was. Every Tuesday, I'm going to say, hey, uh, I'm studying for this coming Sunday. Here's a picture of the coffee shop where I'm studying. Or here's a picture of something. Hey, every Tuesday afternoon, I'm going to take a picture of some ministry in our church or some leader that I really connected with, a shout out to somebody that somebody you need to know that you may not. Every Wednesday, hey, I'm going to take prayer request. And so I just put a post. Hey, if you'll leave a prayer request here, uh, and if you don't want to share here, that's cool. You can send me a direct message. I'll pray for you today, and I'll be sure that I do it. Uh, every Thursday, hey, I go out on date night with my wife on Thursday. So what if you just, hey, picture of the date night every Friday. Hey, I'm looking forward to seeing this weekend, you know, or whatever it is. Like you decide, and once you create that grit, it takes the guesswork out of what do I post. Now, you're not locked into it. You can be if you want to be. But but it removes the, what am I going to say? Because now you've already decided. You made it easy. So step one is use a content calendar to make it easy. Step number two is to fill that calendar. And I, and I suggest you post every day with some content, with some call to action, with some announcement, some inspiration, meaning a, a combination of all of that. So go back to it. Content. That's information might be Monday, right? Uh, other call to action might be, hey, Saturday, remind people, hey, tomorrow we're going to do baptism, sign up to be baptized. Hey, tomorrow our membership class starts. Hey, Wednesday, tonight we're starting this new, like you get the idea there. Not all the same stuff, just make some variety there. Number three is to integrate your social media with all of your messaging meaning your email and your in-person announcements and sermons and everything else. Uh, what do I mean by that? Um, well, let's talk about the sermon. Uh, after you give the sermon, be sure you post that and share the whole thing or share clips and pieces, chunks from the sermon. The, the the announcements that you make on Sunday, hey, the, the, the really good ones, the important ones that people, everybody needs to know, make sure that you let people know that via, via the email channels at your church and via the social media that you have on your personal account and on your church account. Uh, everything that you put on one channel, here, here's what I'm saying. We, we've got a training that'll show you how to do this. Everything that you're going to say in one place, just be sure you get the words right the first time. And don't think in terms of like, oh, I got to come up with something to say here and something to say there. And then you get so overwhelmed that you freeze up and don't do anything. Or maybe even worse, you spend all of your time doing it so you don't focus on the things that matter the most with the mission that you're called to. Once you do it, dial it in one time, do it right, and send it out in every single direction. Fourth thing about social media is use social media to drive people to your site. Use it. The opposite way that we normally do. How do you do that? Well, you put links in the comments and say, hey, uh, for more information, go here. And you send them the direct link to the blog post or the direct link to the announcement page or the direct link where they can sign up. The direct link to the sermon of the week or the direct link to the membership class or the direct link to the parenting course that you put together from old sermons that you repurposed or the direct link to, hey, just sign up here and we'll give you content that's related to where you are in life now that'll serve you the best. You know, it's it's, it's summer, going on vacation. Hey, well, here's a playlist for, for the drive. Here, here's the sermon. Uh, or the, the song list from last Sunday. Here's the playlist that our worship leader put together. You can put all of this, package it up. Remember this, though, with social media, email is the king. Email is far more valuable than social media. Now, it's weird to me that every time that I start talking to people about online communication processes, the... Uh, conversation instantly shifts to instantly shifts to what do you do with social media? Because what I've said is your website is your home base. And now I want to highlight to you that email is really 
the space where you're going to be able to communicate more clearly, succinctly, and more readily with more eyeballs actually seeing it. Uh, Kerry Newhoff said this. It was an article that I pulled up uh, about a year or two ago. Here's a little surprise. Email use is actually growing by 2024. Over 4.5 billion people worldwide are expected to use email. That's up from 3.7 billion in 2017. The average person spends over five hours a day on email. Most emails are read within an hour of sending them. He continues, text messaging open rates are over 98% and texts are read on an average within 15 minutes of sending. While text message marketing is still in the early stages, it's something to start building as you build your email list. You can't text people at the rate you can email them, but still, it's an important list to build. Now, notice what we've been putting together in this part of the module. Social media, 95% of the people who are on your followers list will never see it. M much less people that aren't following you. Email, uh, we j just read, is uh, read within 60 minutes. Now, I put the number 30% there is a great open rate. Uh, increasingly, I'm kind of seeing that trend go up. Now, I, I would have thought with the privacy concerns and everything like that, it would be going down. But I'm starting to see with some of the people that we've been working with, open rates at 40%, 48%, 52%. That, mean, that means that half the people who are sent that email are opening and taking a look at that email long enough for the software to track that the person got it. Text. What we just read there is it within 15 minutes, 98% of the people actually see the text. Uh, let me show you another. Now, this is a business leader uh, in the online coaching space. Brendan Burchard says, social media is a great tool for personal branding, but the truth is most thought leaders and influencers do not earn the majority of their revenue through this channel. Now, I know you're not necessarily trying to earn a revenue, what you're trying to do is a greater return on investment. You're doing life change. Most major revenue comes through email and email communication over a period of time. So not just one email, but, you know, repeating and sending and regular contact with people. He says, I know. I have 6 million fans, that's on social media, and email is way more powerful for me and all the major creators, teachers, thought leaders, and social media superstars that I coach. What's he saying? Email, not social media. Uh, here's other ways people use email. People use email for utility bills. They use it for taxes and tax documents. They use email for rent and for mortgage applications and even to pay uh, either of these. They use it for school registration. They use it for anything else they purchase online, including at Amazon.com, at Target.com, at Walmart.com, at BarnesandNoble.com. All of the .coms use your email, not your social media. You use email, ironically, to log into social media. Email. Email is the thing. Now, in addition to the technology, which we've just talked about, we've talked about website, we've talked about email, there are at least two other elements that need to align with your discipleship path. Let, let me tell you what they are. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on these because the purpose of this course, this training is really to help you align the technology. But, but I want to show you there, there needs to be some alignment between what's going on technologically with offline. And really, that offline stuff is what needs to drive the technology, not the other way around. So the first thing is, your processes, when people show up at that building, um, that needs to be figured into your discipleship framework. So your process is from the street, meaning that they've said, yes, we're coming to see you. What happens next? What happens when they show up at your building? What, what are the intentional touch points before someone ever takes the stage, before any song is ever sung. Here, here's an example. And in the modules down below, there are uh, examples of all of these processes that you can pull where I've gotten permission, where I've worked with other churches, and we've gotten some drafts together. 
uh, when I was working at one church consulting, uh, we decided that we're going to do six touches from the street to the seat. So that meant from the time somebody pulled off the street and turned into the parking lot, six touches before they sit down in their chair. Six. Now, that sounds overwhelming, but you think about it. Okay, the parking team, i got a moisture right here. The parking team smiles, waves to them when they're turning in from the street. In effect, hey, we're glad you're here. Because this is somebody that's making that, making that transition from, remember, community towards connection or from connection to congregation, or they, they may even be deeper. So we're, we're welcoming somebody who's already in the family. Number two, another parking team member greets them while they're walking through the parking lot, says, hey, hello, good to see you. So glad you're here. That person actually gets to talk to them and gets to be heard by them. A greeter says hello to them in the lobby. Another usher greets them in the hall from the lobby towards the coffee bar. Whether they get coffee or not, that's kind of the central hub. We don't care, but we're going to greet them. Somebody at the coffee bar greets them saying hello as they pass by, even if they don't stop for a drink. You know, it's everybody's kind of like when you're in the mall and they're handing you out like uh, nuggets, you know, Chick-fil-A nuggets or whatever, like samples. You're still saying hello to everybody. And then an usher hands them a bulletin and a connection card in the worship space. This happens before they ever get in and take a seat. And then, of course, you got roving greeters in there that are walking around that are intentionally saying hello. Why? Because every one of these touch points is a connection that's helping move people closer from community to connected or from connected to congregation. Uh, this means, too, we need intentional touch points that we make in the community, including schools, fire departments, sports teams. All of those need to be intentionally aligned with this process. Now, that does not mean that when we go to the school to feed the teachers, you know, on a special teacher work day where they can do the work and they don't have to worry about anything else. And you just go in and feed them, right? Which is what one of the churches here is doing that we've been doing some work with. That, that, that doesn't mean that they go, hey, sign up for our class. It just means, hey, we know that this is people that God loves, that we love, that are image bearers of God. They're serving sons and daughters of ours in the community and other sons and daughters. People don't even go to our church. They're here and we're serving them. This is an intentional ongoing connection point we have in our community. And some of the community is going to be connected to us, right? And some of those who are connected are kind of part of the congregation. You see, like it all fits when you start thinking about it from an intentional standpoint. Like, you know, we're not just doing random. Like, we're actually thinking about relationship.